everyone, this is Chris from Console Customs and today I'm going to show you the installation of our Xbox One V4S Rapid Fire Controller mod. This is our new mod specifically for the S controllers, the slim Xbox One controllers. And uh, as you can see it's quite a bit involved here but uh, I assure you all these points make it nice and easy to install this mod into your controller. Everything solders directly to the mod, uh, so there's no wires unless you decide to add some buttons at the end. So today we're going to take you through the installation. Uh, for this mod, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a soldering iron uh, and some solder. Uh, we recommend a, a maximum of a 30 watt soldering iron, uh, any hotter than that, and you could potentially damage the flex uh, you also need some screwdrivers. You're going to need a Torx T8 security screwdriver. That's a T8 with a small hole in the tip. And you also need a Torx T6 screwdriver. Um, if you decide to install any buttons, optionally, uh, we sell buttons with the mod. So we have two different size buttons, a smaller 6 millimeter button and uh, larger 12 millimeter button um, and soon uh, on our website as well you will see our new paddle system uh, so this uses a small spacer with some uh, this is a circuit board which actually fits on the outside of the controller um, basically I'll show you real quick you mount the spacer on the back of your controller and then with your paddles and uh, you have a quick easy paddle mod with just a few screws. Uh, so that's coming to the website as well. Um, if you are installing the normal size buttons here, yeah, you will need a drill bit. So for the small button, you need either a 1 8 or 9 64 inch drill bit. And for the larger button, uh, you need a 17 64 or 9 30 seconds inch drill bit, so a little bit larger. This mod has options of our uh, reflex remapping buttons like uh, all of our other mods have had in the past. So you have connection points here for four different buttons. Uh, the M1 and M2 that you see labeled here, these are for the reflex remapping buttons. So these buttons are what you could tie into those paddles or two buttons on the back of the controller and allow you to map any standard controller button to the buttons on the back of the controller. Uh, then you have also um, the RF button and uh, this A or alternate button. The RF button can take the place of left on the D-pad. A lot of features uh, including the rapid fire turn on by using left on the d-pad plus another button such as left plus the right trigger to turn rapid fire on um, and other features can be turned on using up on the d-pad uh, plus another button and you can use add buttons to the back of the controller uh, which take the place of these so that would be the RF in place of the left or this A uh, or alternate button instead of the up on the d-pad As I mentioned, this mod is only for the S or Slim controllers. Uh, these are the newer controllers from Microsoft. Uh, the easiest way to tell is just you can look at the controller and it's one solid piece up here. If we take a look at an older controller, you can see this kind of a separate piece up here around the, the guide button, home button. So this is an older controller. The mod does not work for these controllers. So you need one of these newer styles. It's a nice solid smooth piece up here. Easy way to tell if you have the slim controller. So to get started we need to open this controller. Uh, this one's been open a few times before. It's one of our test controllers. It has a little hole on the bottom so just ignore that for now but we need to take and remove the battery cover and the two side grip covers. These are just held in by several clips. You can use a small pry tool. Uh, really I just prefer to use my fingernails. It, makes 
quick work of it and you are sure not to scratch anything up. So we can just pop those off. Set them off to the side. And then we have five of the T8 security screws we need to remove. So two on either side and then one that's behind the battery, behind this sticker here. So we'll go ahead and get those out. Okay, so we have all our screws out. We've set the back of the case to the side. We can actually just take and remove the board from the front of the case as well. Set that off to the side and I'm also going to remove the thumbsticks. So this mod installs to some parts on this uh, back circuit board, this U-shaped circuit board and also on the, the board behind it. So we have to get to that board first, the one in the back, and to do that we need to remove two of the Torx T6 screws. So you have one in each corner here. So we'll go ahead and remove those real quick. All right, and we also need to remove this small antenna wire here. It's just clipped onto this board, so really you can just kind of get your fingernail underneath it and pop it off there like that. And we'll just move it out of the way for now. So this board will pop off now and just kind of sit loose, but uh, we have the wires for the rumble motors. The uh, easiest thing to do is actually just remove both rumble mo motors from one side. Um, just pay attention to where your wires are going, what colors go where. Um, but we'll just go ahead and take those wires off real quick. And that will allow us to just go ahead and flip the board out of the way. You can even take and remove this rumble motor, just set it off to the side. So now we can just flip this off to the side um, and to watch out for the headphone jack. It's basically just loose in there. It's held by pressure against these uh, pads over here. So we'll set that off to the side as well. And now we can get started installing the mod. To install the mod, we actually need to start with it flipped over. So you'll see on the back side there are some solder points labeled for some different things. And uh, also, as you can tell, this is a pretty big mod with a lot of different contact points on it. So it's critical to make sure that it's lined up correctly. So what we like to do is just start uh, with the RG point down here that's the right for the D-pad and then also up here the VW uh, which is the view button. So by soldering those two mods uh, locations first we can get everything lined up and then go ahead and finish the rest of them. So I need to set this in here. It kind of fits snugly up against the uh, the arms for the battery tray here and I'll just get a nice close up you can see the RG goes to the point that's labeled TP14 so if we line that up we can kind of see all these other points line up with uh, different solder locations on the board so I'm going to go ahead and solder the RG and the VW points and then we'll go ahead and take a look make sure everything else lines up properly.
Okay, so I have those first two spots soldered in place. So now we can see all the other ones, the X, A, R, B, uh, menu button, all those line up where they are supposed to. And same thing for the LED and these connections over here. So we can go ahead and just kind of go around and where there's a solder point, uh, just go ahead and make those connections. We'll start with all the ones here on the left and, and work our way over. And I am using uh, some rosin core solder that's solder that has flux in the middle of it already so this really helps for the installation I don't have to use a separate flux you can pick this up at Radio Shack um, I recommend the type that does have lead in it uh, lead free solder is much harder to work with so if you're a beginner to soldering it's uh, it's not really easy to work with a lead free solder alright so we have all these connections soldered on the left over here. Those ones are done. And we can work our way over. So we will get our LED connection soldered here. Move this wire out of the way so I can see a little bit. Alright, and we can move on to our up and left connections. So we just have to flex this just a little bit to get those lined up right. One nice thing about the flex mod in general is even if you're a little bit off, you can usually get it lined up where it's supposed to be. So we have our left and up soldered into place there. And we just have two more on this backboard, uh, which is our power and LB button connections. So we will get those real quick. I can also help to, before you solder these, just put a little solder on the uh, pad on the board first then you can hold the, be able to hold the board with one hand and not have to have three things in your hand at one time trying to solder <laughs> all right so there now we have our power it's our the V connection and the LB so with those done we're done on the back of the board and we can go ahead and put this top board back in place. Uh, just make sure your mod's out of the way here. Snap our plug back in, make sure our wires are all in place. We can connect back up the antenna. snaps into place like that and I'm going to go ahead and put the two Torx T6 screws back in as well so we don't forget
Okay, so now we need to finish up our connections on this other board so we can take this small part of the mod here and this just flips over into this area. So we have three connections over here. Um, one that's kind of underneath the trigger. Basically you are soldering to the bottom leg of this small sensor here. And then uh, next we are soldering to uh, this is actually the left uh, or, I'm sorry yeah left thumbstick click so the small square pad here to right there and we have our left trigger over here so we'll make those connections again it helps to just add a little solder where you are putting the mod and then we don't have to hold the solder at the same time Alright, so now those three connections are done. And we can go back over to the main part of our mod here. And what we will want to do, just so it holds it in place, so we flip this over. If you want to, you could stick a little hot glue back behind there. Um, it's not really necessary though. Um, just kind of flex this mod so it lays flat down in there and line up these two holes right here for uh, the other thumbstick click and we'll solder those in place and that is what will hold our mod down as well. Alright, so there we go. And now we have just two more connections over here on this little arm, which is the right trigger and the B button. So you can see those line up nice with the pad. Just need to solder them. And then we are actually finished with a basic installation of this mod. Now we have those two soldered in place and right now the basic installation is done so right now we could solder back our rumble, rumble motors and uh, close up the controller and the mod would work uh, with the basic functions using the d-pad to turn different features on and off in combination with other buttons uh, so if that's all you want to do we're done at this point now if we want to add in some buttons we can go further but uh, we'll first uh, tidy this up by putting our uh, rumble motor connections back on here and go from there. Alright before we take this any further I just noticed I missed putting the headphone jack back in there. So we need to do that first. To do that, uh, I'm just going to have to take these T6 screws back out of here and we can kind of slide it in place. So we'll just pop this back off, plug in there. has a couple little guides keep it in place and push it back together and put our screws back in all right so 
Now we can take this a little bit further and go ahead and either install some buttons or paddles. So I think today we'll go ahead and just install one of our new paddles in here so you can see what those look like. To do that we are going to need to make a few holes in the back of our shell. So I said the uh, paddles come with uh, a little spacer. This is a different uh, base size for our Xbox One or PS4 controller. Um, but this just will go on the back of the controller and luckily the Xbox One controllers make it real easy. There's a nice little divot in the controller and that's right where you want to mount this thing. So we want to center that center hole right over that and we can take something we need to drill holes in these two larger holes on either side into the controller and then also one in the middle. Uh, as you'll tell the one in the middle comes right out by this peg so we're going to end up just getting rid of that little peg there. But uh, we can take and hold this here and you can use um, your drill bit, you can use a small drill bit or something and just uh, mark where you need your holes. Or if you're feeling really confident you could just hold it there and, and drill your holes in place. So we're just going to make a few marks and now we are using a 3 30 seconds drill bit. So this is the right size for the screws that we include with the paddles. But you will need your own drill and drill bit. We include the screws, but uh, the rest you need to provide. All right, so we've got that centered around our hole there. And now what we want to do is make a larger hole in the middle that our, our wires are going to go through. To make that hole, I'm going to use a three sixteenths inch drill bit. And we'll just drill that right in the center of that little crease there. Clean up our our mess. All right, now we can go ahead and screw our spacer into shell. So, as I said, the uh, kit includes some screws. These are just regular Phillips head screws. Get those lined up and get those disinstalled. Now you want to make sure we don't over tighten these ones. Uh, we are just drilling, screwing into plastic, so can't easily strip them out. Just get them snug so that it doesn't pull out. get this one to start. There we go. Alright, 
just like that. So now what we need to do is get the wires prepared on our mod. So we have on the paddles four solder pads here. Uh, one a ground uh, positive voltage and the two. So the one and the two are the connections to our M1 and M2 and we want to use those uh, round pads right here. So the round pads are the button connections. So from the M1 and M2 that the round pads will go to the one and two on the paddle and the square pads for each of these is a ground so we just need one of those so we can just use one of those square pads to go to the G pad on the paddle and if we just want the paddle function then that's all we need uh, but these also have the option of LED lights on them so we offer it with no LEDs uh, red blue or green LEDs and to, to be honest I'm not sure which color this one actually is so we're gonna find out together once we get it uh, hooked up but if we want the LEDs to work we have to hook up the positive voltage so from this mod we actually are going to pull that from these pads labeled debug and we want the fourth one from the chip so one two three four kind of around here um, that is where we are going to pull that from so I have few different wires here already cut uh, and one end of them stripped so we'll make some connections to the mod and we can install our paddles so I just took and tinned those connections that we'll need, those three right there, plus our power from over there. So I am going to use red for our positive voltage. And we will use green for the ground. And we'll just use yellow and blue for our one and two. Okay, so we have those all connected. Now, uh, since we're installing the paddles, really we want to just go ahead and close the controller back up. Um, so let me just talk just a second. If we didn't use the paddles uh, and we wanted to install some of the buttons, uh, such as these larger buttons, you may want to put those in the hand grip. So you would just drill a hole and hot glue those buttons in on the inside. Uh, so just put it in like that and make the connections to the same locations, the M1 and M2, or if you wanted to do it uh, to one of the uh, other two alternate buttons instead of use, so you don't have to use the D-pad. And what we would do for these buttons, as you can see on both of them, we have legs on either side. We only need one set of those. So what we normally do is just go ahead and remove one set from the side. Like that. So those are the two that you would use. Doesn't matter which way they're hooked up. Um, when you push the button it just makes those two legs connect together and that's what activates the button. So we would do the same thing on the big one. We don't need full size, just one. So we can hook up those two legs for our button and we would be good to go. Uh, the other thing we'll do here real quick is just uh, set this little peg kind of in the way. Just take a little pocket knife or a pair of pliers and break that out of there. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and start putting our controller back together. You can put the thumbsticks on front half together. And now what we need to do is run our four wires here through the hole. So we can get those connected. Now I'm just going to put in just the one screw in the middle to hold the case together. Now these kind of have some play so we'll be able to shove those back in there when we put it on but really we want to try and keep these as short as we can. So I am going to grab a pair of wire cutters and cut those down. Actually, how about a pair of scissors? That's what I could find. So we'll just trim those so we can make those connections. And we need to strip that wire. This is just a small little 30 gauge wire strippers, 30 gauge wire that we ship with the button sets. So just quick strip a little bit off the end of these wires. And we can work on soldering them to our pads, our paddle. What I will do is just take and tin each of these connections, basically just adding a little bit of solder to each one. Like that. And we can solder our wires, just have to remember which colors we used. So our red was for our positive voltage there. The V. And the green was our ground. And our one and two were the yellow and the blue. So these buttons default to uh, A and B. So one being A, M1 being A, and M2 being B. But you can change those in the programming mode of the mod to be any button that you want them to be. Uh, it can be a button. Uh, any of these four buttons, uh, triggers, LBRB, uh, view, menu, uh, the thumbstick clicks, and the, any D-pad direction. So the only thing that it can't be is the, uh, the home button, guide button, whatever you want to call it. But uh, every other button you can set to these paddles in the programming mode. Alright, so we have our wires all connected here. And now all we need to do is kind of carefully push those back in to the controller. And screw in our other two screws. Okay, so now we have our paddle installed. The buttons that are used on there are a nice soft click. So it's, uh, it gives a nice, really nice feel to those buttons when they're installed. And uh, we can go ahead and finish uh, putting all the screws back in, but uh, we'll just go ahead and grab some batteries and I can show you what this will look like. Okay, I've got some batteries installed, so now we can 
see what these paddles look like with the controller on. All right, so these were the blue LEDs. So that are the, those are the paddles. All right, and that is the installation of our Xbox One V4S Rapid Fire mod. So if you have any questions, you can hit us up on our website, www.consolecustoms.com, and uh, we'll be happy to answer those. We sell these mods wholesale as well, so if you are an installer, um, we can definitely get you set up with some discounted pricing on these mods. Thanks again.